Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday, September 13th show for Classroom 2.0 Live. Today's topic is Live Binders as ePortfolios for Student Career Exploration. The show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffitt, that's me, and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing closed captioning today. Our special guests are Karma Yancey and her students, as well as Tina Schneider and Mike Fisher. I'll introduce Tina, who will introduce everybody else. Uh, Tina is one of the founders of uh, LiveBinder, LiveBinders. She's a LiveBinder founder who loves working with educators and helping people get organized. She's a co-founder along with Barbara Ta Talent. Tina's passionate about creating technology that connects people and ideas. Her mission is to enhance digital communication through new forms of narrative. As an MFA graduate student at SF State, she applied art theory practice to digital mediums. Tina continued to develop that perspective as an intern at Xerox Park and then as software researcher with FX Palo Alto Laboratory. In 2003, she received the prestigious Fuji Xerox Innovative Technology Award for her work addressing the communication behaviors of digital natives. Today, Tina is focusing her attention on educators providing a platform that empowers them and their students to be knowledge leaders. So I will turn the mic over to you, Tina. Thank you, Lori. Hi, welcome. everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. It's great to be here, and I'm excited to share with you some work that was done with Karma and her students. And just briefly, I noticed that some of you are not familiar with LiveBinders, so I wanted to go over um, just really quickly what LiveBinders is about. And basically, if you remember, or maybe you still do this with, with paper, you know, we're used to Xerox copying and, and printing out our spreadsheets, or if we see something in a book that we like, we used to Xerox copy it, and if we wanted to put it together and share it with a class or just another individual, we could just punch three holes in them and put a tab around it and, and make it our own with binders. Well, now if you look at what the Internet has done and all these great tools that are out there on the web, many of us now are creating, finding, and using media that's on other people's websites. Or maybe it's your own. Maybe you're starting to use Google Docs or you're storing your documents on Dropbox. Maybe you're starting to integrate video in, in your curriculum. So where is the three-hole punch? Where is the binder on the web? So this is where Live Binders comes in. We allow you to take a, a link or upload a file, and we'll give you a link, and insert them into a binder, a virtual binder that you can organize by tabs and subtabs, and now with just a recent release for our subscribers, a third row of tabs. So this allows you to add Microsoft Office documents, to add PDFs. If you're working with Prezi's, you'll see in the, the webinar today some other examples of Zoki's and really cool stuff that you can use the embed code to insert inside of binders. And we've had teachers use them to present class material. We've, as in today, we'll have them use them as e-portfolios. So there's, you know, what you could do before with, with paper and a binder, you can now um, start taming this information overload into something that's contextually re relevant for you in your, in your classroom. So here, I, you saw this screenshot earlier. It, this is one way that you can view a binder. It's really organized by tabs and subtabs. The grays are subtabs. Um, and you can insert other binders actually inside of a binder because it's a, it's, all of it is all a, a hyperlink. And this is what you're seeing here, a screenshot of one tab that's pointing to Karma Yancey's uh, classroom binder here. And this is Mike Fisher's binder on digital portfolios that you can find on our site. And this is an example where you can see tabs and subtabs at the top. So you can imagine all kinds of great content that can get organized in a binder. And about three or four years ago, we started 
wanting to share and highlight some really great binders that teachers and students had been creating with our um, top 10 contest. And that's what we're going to share with you today. Um, really briefly, I don't want to get too much time to it, but we constantly add new features. You know, I know Peggy wanted me to share with you a, a couple of those. We have this third row tab, which we are calling base tabs for our subscribers. We also now have a way for you to move uh, all of your content around. So if you want to reorganize your binders, you can now do that and move them into base tabs using our copy move feature. And I'm um, pleased to announce that we just released our accessibility documentation. So um, our iPhone and our web application are now accessible uh, for handicap users. And our iPad app is not ready yet, but we are working on that for our next release. And also, I'm happy to announce that this week we'll be um, submitting our latest upgrade to our iPhone app, which will allow you to take your photos on your iPhone and add them directly to your binder. So if you're taking um, pictures of your classroom activity and want to put them in your assessment binders, you can do that now directly from your iPhone. So, so I'd like to welcome Mike Fisher, who is an educational consultant and an instructional coach, as I kind of briefly explain how we were able to come upon Carmen Yancey's great classroom Binder project. Actually, it was Nikki Mueller, who's a, also an avid author on our site, who, who knows Karma. And Karma had asked her um, about some questions about getting started. And I'm sure, Karma, you, you'll explain that further in your, your presentation. But she had mentioned to me, Nikki, um, that I should check out these student binders that being, are being produced. And we, Barbara and I were both really impressed with what, what was going on with the content. And so invited. Um, Ms. Nancy to have the students submit them for the top 10 live binder contest. And Mike Fisher was one of our judges. And he kind of pulled me to the side and said, you know, this is actually really cool stuff. We should um, think about bringing them on and sharing them with other teachers. So, and that is why we are here today. Mike, are you there? I am here. Um, I was really just blown away by the, the quality of the submissions that we got this year for the contest. And uh, this is the third year of, of having the top 10 live binders. And um, <clears throat> this year we had a, a specific topic we were looking for, uh, portfolios and multiple different iterations. And what Karma submitted uh, with her students really just spoke to the heart of what we were looking for in terms of you know, demonstration of learning, using multiple web tools, and being really innovative with what Live Binders uh, allows us to do. And so that's why we're all here today, because we really thought it was um, a good idea to share, you know, the, the really cool things that, that her kids did. And I'm really, I'm really happy that this is working out. And just big kudos to, to Karma and, and what she's done here. Yes, yeah, so and these students, I, I wish I could mention all your names at one time. It would take a, a, lot, a lot of our time out. But I, I think you guys did a fantastic job. And I'd like to um, introduce Karma right now, who can talk a little bit about how she came up with the idea and what were some of the processes that the kids had to go through to create these great, compelling binders. Well, hello, everyone. And I want to thank you guys for having us on the show today. I apologize if my voice is a little squeaky. I'm working on a cold, but I'll do my best to get through. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I had used live binders for myself just to help with some websites and, and some things that I wanted to kind of keep in order. And this was the first year that I had to, or last year, I should say, this is the spring of last year, that I had to teach Career 7. We actually call it uh, Middle School Career Development. And so I wanted a way that the kids could collect all the information that they were learning about. And so I um, based everything off of the Nebraska career education model. And that's what I have displayed here for you. It is broken down into uh, six career fields. And then it's broken down into 16 career clusters. And even further, it goes into pathways. And then the individual careers are occupational specialties. So we had a lot of information to cover. And so I knew in order to get through the majority of it, I was going to have to have a way of, of letting the kids gather their information. 
And so I kind of came to me, I thought, well, wouldn't it be really fun to create a life binder and everything is the kids, either a project or activity that we were doing or a worksheet, add that to the binder that they could have and come back and, and reflect on maybe later in their high school career. And so that's kind of the background of how the, the life binders with the class developed. This is just a screenshot off of Nebraska Department of Edu Education website. And the curriculum that I used was C4C Curriculum for Careers. So all the lessons that I developed came off of this website. But instead of maybe then just having them you know, journalize or do some other activity, I tried to either find a computer uh, website site that they could use or an iPad app. I had written a grant and received, I got 10 iPad minis and so I really wanted to implement those into the classroom. The kids all had laptops, so between the laptops and the iPads they were able to per, um, complete all the activities that we did in class. What our final project was, was we kind of we're pushing towards a professional learning plan. And what that does is that allows the kids, the kids to look at a career of interest to them. And then they find what cluster on the Nebraska Career Education web, uh, model that that falls under. They look at the pathway. And then they chose that specific career. And then they looked at classes that we offer or a career academies that we offer here at the school that can help them prepare for those careers. And so this was their end target goal of the end of the, the of all their research and learning. Then they they completed a personal learning plan and I will actually have one of my students talk about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Caitlin. Caitlin is going to talk to you about Glogster, and Glogster is a website. And I'm working on my application sharing. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Tina. Are you ready to go? So, hi. I'm having a little bit of my application sharing is not working. So, should I just wait till. It looks like it's stuck a little. Let's see. Check to make sure that the application you're wanting to share is not minimized. That could be one of them. If you have a dual screen monitor, Try it on the different screen if it is maximized. Sometimes it doesn't pick up if you've got it on a different monitor. I do not. It's all on the same. Is it open? Is it set to that page? Yeah. Hmm. I would cancel it and try again, maybe with a hiccup in the connection. OK. Should I take my talk off and then put it back on? I'll so look for a start sharing button. Sometimes the little window doesn't pop up until you click the start sharing button. That also could be it. It's not. Right underneath well, the little scribbly uh, whiteboard icon, it'll say start sharing right underneath there. Right under help, there's a little start sharing button, looks like. And it's not popping up for me. Hmm. Yeah. If I click it, it's going to open. And I'll take them. Hmm. Well, we can go. I have screenshots, so we can go to. This is just a screenshot of of the, the of my binder. So I'm just going to do a screenshot of Caitlin's. Like I said, Caitlin's going to talk about Glockster. You want to make sure you check this out in her binder. It is found under um, the personal learning. It would be the very last activity in my career because there's a lot of interactives on it that the screen is just not going to show. So I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin. Peggy mentioned that she could do application sharing for you as well. So 
you want her to try to do that? Yeah, she can try. Hello, can everybody hear me? Okay. I am gonna, I'm gonna tell you about Glogster, and it's the website that we use for our final project in Career Seven, and it's basically just like a digital bulletin board. You can put videos and pictures, and you can type in information on it. Um, we called the um, we called it our personal learning plan, is what we called our final project. So that's what the title is. And we had to interview a person that we wanted to do our job in. The job we wanted to go in, we had to interview a the person that has a career in that job. And I interviewed our kindergarten teacher because I wanted I want to be a lower elementary teacher. And so that's what we used. We used Gogster for our final project. And you can put a lot of animated things in it. And it has a lot of options already on the website that you can do a whole bunch of fun things with it. And that's about it. So which okay. tab? Which tab has the Glogster in it, so we can find it? And show Let's go to the personal learning plan. Let's go to the personal learning plan. Start at the bottom. Okay, last tab. Yep, the last one, and then career. And then click on career. Yep. Okay. No sub tab yet. So once this is loading, you'll see there. There's a lot of animation that they can do. There's a lot of graphics within the website that they can use. She was able to upload her videos. She did a recording to, that was just how she chose to do her final reflection of her personal learning plan. So in this case, um, as a line binder spokesman here, you used the embed code, right, Caitlin, to get the blogster inside of the binder? That's what it looks like to me. Yes, I did. Okay. So which parts of it are exploratory? If you scroll down, um, like there's a YouTube video on there and she did an audio recording and So it's got high school courses, high school activities, so successful skills. So this is some of the things that you need in order to be prepared for that career. Is that right, Caitlin? Yes, that is correct. And did you get that from the talking with the teacher, or was that part of some of the research that you um, did? Some of it I got online, and some of it I got from talking with our with our kindergarten teacher, how like what she does to teach her kids, like what she teaches the kindergartners, and some of it I got from Mrs. Yancey. So what did you think? A lot of prep work, huh, to become a teacher? Yeah, that's what my mom is a teacher, and it sounds like really fun, and I like little kids, and so I think it'd be fun to be a kindergarten teacher. Well, I like. I wish we could play that video of your interview. Um, how long is that video? Um, it might be like around three minutes, three to five minutes or something. Yeah, it's not too bad, but I think we probably need to move move on and not play that one. But it looks great. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the the project? Were there other careers that you explored? Um, I did kind of explore like being a nurse or a job like that, but I kind of decided to go with being a teacher instead because it is what sounds fun and what I'd like to do. Sounds like you want to help people. Great. Thank yeah. you. Very well presented. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, next up is Jaden. Okay, and Jaden is going to talk about pick collage 
it's going to be in the career exploration tab. And then she has two different ones. She has Roadmap of My Life 1 and Roadmap of My Life 2. So either one of those you could show. So under the Career Exploration. So number two tab uh, in her binder. The career. Mm -hmm. And then she has Roadmap of My Life 1. Is this up down there? Looks like it's up top 4. OK, so I'm going to turn it over to Jaden. Uh, well, my name is Jaden, and so pretty much what Epic Collage is, is that I would go on to the Collage app on the iPad Minis and create the new collage. And then from there, you can get different backgrounds, and then add pictures from the web or from your camera roll, and change the size or like the placement. And then you can also add text and change the color of the words and the font and how big it is. And then you can also add like stickers and other cool things like that. So very cool. Okay. You did this from a mini iPad, is that right? Yes. Oh, very cool. So what is it about? Let's see. What what is it about you that I see here? Um. So all this collage. There's like places that I want to go to college in Nebraska. And then there's also a picture of a veterinarian. And then also a physical uh, education teacher. And then it also says like there's a picture of uh, math. And so that pretty much said that my favorite uh, subject is math. And I was pretty good at math. And then a subject that I could improve on would be the one to the left. And that was supposed to be an English teacher. So I could improve on my English. And then to the right of the math one was a four leaf clover for 4-H. Because I am in 4-H and I show animals. And then below, there is a picture of um, some boys holding some balls and stuff. So that, um, like talks about how I like sports. And then there's also a picture of Josiah and Caitlin. And those were like people that I can talk about like my future with. It's very cool. So you want to help animals, you love math, and um, you're going to improve your English and you love sports. That's great. Thank you so much. Yeah. I got any comment in this? Yeah, I see you had something you wanted. Oh, I was just going to try to help her out and just say, you know, kind of give a background of what the assignment was, and they were to pick, you know, look at careers that they were interested, in, you know, the school classes that they are good at, what they need to improve on, activities that would help them, you know, with that career, and then just people that help them with their, you know, um, helping their career decisions. I love that you said that these were the. Um, classmates that you would like to talk about the future with. I think that's great for kids to think like that. I mean, yeah, who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Why, why are we in school and how can that help? That was a nice touch. OK, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jackson Grote. Jackson is going to talk about Bing Link, and it is a website that we use. So you will find his under the AV and Technology tab. And then it's going to be under My Leader. So if you go to AV Technology, oh, to the left, there you go. And then My Leader. Uh, hi, this is Jackson, and I'm going to be talking about the ThingLink app. It helps me talk about uh, my uh, what, uh, leader and uh, and the yeah the cluster of EV technology. And when I grow up, I kind of wanted to be a sports announcer. 
and my kind of role model for uh, uh, like a sports announcer is if I tell because I like to watch him announce games and I create a thing link over him and when you hover over the little dots they kind of talk about his past and what high schools he coached at and like he kind of co he coached in the col in college uh yeah so uh the so, way thing link works is you are doing the recording so you pick the hot spots on the image is that is it is that what that means and then you add yeah. all that stuff in so the text yeah. and the images is all you doing that yeah There in, uh, there in the little red, yellow, and like, green dots, I talked about, I entered text in there, and then on the little play circles, I entered a video of him, like, announcing, and the little dots, that was, like, a picture icon, it was some logos where he coached of the uh, colleges and high schools. And then this one too, you use the embed code to yeah. get this inside? Okay. And how is this different than the Globster? Um, in the Globster, you can have different arrows to uh, point out your other uh, scripts, and it's more animated than in this one. It has little bullets where you can just hover over them, over them and it, it's a little more t space relevant, it's easier to cram more things in, I guess, so you can add more stuff, and you can even have a background, like, I have a background of Dick Vitale on there. So, yeah, what you guys are looking at here is actually, um, this is Nancy's binder at the top. She has one binder that she inserted the link to each of her students' own binders in there. So. Peggy right now is is doing a, a quick uh, job for Miss Yancey because I think Miss Yancey had it all presented in, in different tabs in the browser. But but Peggy is showing it from one binder, all of the different binders that the students created because it's shared by link. So inside of Miss Yancey's binder, we are now looking at Jackson's binder. And in his binder, he's got like one, two, three, like 20 tabs um, at the top. And so we're looking at his one on AV technology with um, his focus on his leader role, which is Dick Vitale. So that's what you're looking at. So I, I'm just answering a question that was in the chat. Okay. And I just, I'm just going to interact, interact here a little bit that, you know, so the lesson might have had for them to, to research a leader in that career cluster. So instead of them writing a paper and just turning it in, into me, then they, they, got it, they went ahead and did their research, but then they just presented it in this, in this manner. So it just made it a little more interactive, and I felt like I could still un understand and, and test that they had understanding of it but it was just an interactive way to do it. Really, you asked earlier the difference between that and, and Glogster. I would say Glogster is just more of a digital bulletin board that they can do a lot more with the backgrounds, where Thing Link, they can simply you can put an image in and then put the icons and either put like text or a link, and they can change the looks of those, the buttons as they call them in there. Um, but yeah, anytime we could get an embed code, the kids learned how to get the embed codes. And I might add, like on the the um, pic collage, they used the iPad Live Binder app, and they just added those right into there. And then they would go to their desktop and move them and get them into the tabs and rename them and everything. So it worked really. It integrated very nicely. So they created an image of that, uh, and then inserted it to the image tool. Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. save it to the camera roll and then just added it in that way. So Oh, great. That's good to know. So one thing that you mentioned uh, uh, in the last time that we had talked was, you know, even though they, they are doing a lot of this cool technology stuff and, and presenting it in this way, there's still a lot of writing that's going on in the background that is not presented here. Is that Correct. I 
a lot of times, like, well, most of the time, when they had to, whatever tool they were using, or app, or website, they had to create a script. So if they were going to record something, then they had to have that typed out and proof it, and then they could listen to that record and make sure everything was OK. But they, they would do it generally Google Doc, and then they would have the iPad or be on the website and have the recording of what they were going to say. And that way it was just, it integrated the writing in the classroom. The, the final product just had a different look. So, you know, some people might say, OK, is this really formal writing or not? But I guess I feel like it is because I have them do they go through the writing steps, and they did have a a tool or a, a document that they they created their script off of. Can I jump in for just a second? Um, what you're saying is extremely important, and I think we need to just um, orally underline this here. Your objective is for them to be better writers, better researchers uh, around these uh, career decisions, and now they're using new tools. Uh, to do things better, faster, more efficiently, uh, more uh, visually appealing. Um, this is this is incredible. This and this is why it's incredible because you're maintaining uh, your um, focus and your priority on the instructional objective um, and not just on the tool. So we're we're still task focused here, and and I love that this is just developing as part of this conversation. So thank you for saying that. Well, and like I said, you don't really realize, I guess I didn't realize that I had to kind of step back and say, oh, yes, they are writing. And some of the some of the apps, I know like, we'll, we'll talk about one of them in a little bit, the Vokey is they're able to type into it, the Telegami, they're able to type it, so when they listen to it, if they have not used correct English, it's that app is not going to correct say it correctly so they could catch it and go back. It was just another tool or another way for them to check their their writing and kind of revise it. So yes, um, yeah, I think you have an example of that, right? Yes, I yes I will. Yeah. Okay, go and go ahead and move right along. Isaac is going to talk about explain everything. It's going to be in the Arts and AV and Technology tab for him, and then it's going to be the Extended Learning Opportunities. And be prepared, you're going to want to pause it, or it's going to, it's going to want to play that video right away. So just to kind of give you a heads up on that. So I will let Isaac talk about Explain Everything. Hello, my name is Isaac, and I'll be talking to you about Explain Everything. And it's an app that we have on the iPads. and. We used it uh, many times throughout the year, and uh, we used the app to make a presentation on an assignment that we had. And you can change the slide lay layout on each slide, and you can also change the font and the font color. Um, and on each, uh, and you can draw on the slides, and you can uh, add photos, video, and um, your own recording to the. Uh, presentation and it's great to use for short presentations. So what was I'm sorry, what was that again? What was the medium that you used? Isaac? It was telegami and his specific one's not showing up. So just go into I think he used it in career exploration. Mm -hmm. I know it was it was supposed to be in the arts and it, it's not loading because it's out of Dropbox, it doesn't like that. So, let's see if you and you have me quick time again. So he loaded the telegami inside of Dropbox and then inserted the Dropbox link. Yeah, we okay. tried to go to YouTube anytime we could because that was the best. But there, there'll be some. If you click back on my binder, I can show you. It's another example of it's in the next of the. Back. Yeah, just close that. Just go back. Oh, there it's loading now. Okay. Yeah. So, so you want to pause it, or it'll start playing. But, but what explain everything will let them do is it will let them draw. They can add images, and then they can record on all the slides. And so, what they had to do here is they had different extended learning opportunities. So I had set up 
eight different stations for them, and they had to go around and take notes on those and draw an example of those and then record their their notes and make this ex uh, video about their extended learning opportunities. So it's just another way. It was just another way for them to, to not have to sit them take notes and highlight it. They re recorded their notes on information that I gave them, and then they presented it on what they have learned. So I c if you go into, it's just not loading for him. So you could go like back to Jackson's tab and go into the arts and AV and, and extended learning. Yeah, and then go to the AV te technology and the very first one, the extended learning opportunities. This is what the um, explain everything did. We just made it to a YouTube video, but you can see they can draw, they can add text, they can add images on there and then record those slides. So it's called Explain Everything and it's, explain it's everything. really clicking. Very cool. Yes. And they used it on their iPad? They did. They did, yes. Okay, so that's why they could write notes as they were using yeah. it to take notes. Okay, and say and verbally that additional stuff. That's very cool. I like that app. Yes. What I like about this app, let's say they had eight slides and they recorded it and they messed up on slide number two, they could go back and just re-record that slide and not have to record the whole presentation again. So very user friendly. A lot of teachers use it as well too. We started to put it into Dropbox and add in and then we had issues so I started adding it to, it to YouTube, uploading it to YouTube and then getting the embed code that way. So. Very cool. Okay, got, I'm going to. Uh, yep, I, Josiah. Josiah's going to talk about Voki. And if you go under his manufacturing tab, it will be his career reflection. Hi, my name is Josiah, and I did. Uh, the Evoki, and Evoki is an avatar that um, you can personalize in any way. You can dress it, um, change its facial hair, its normal hair, skin color, gender, about anything. And um, one thing that we like about Evoki is how the mouse, when, when you move, the mouse, its eyes will follow it. It has to be over the bokeh, though. And um, our profile pictures were made off bokehs. Um, and to make your bokeh talk, you can type in into words what your bokeh needs to say, but it needs to be spelled correctly, or else it won't say it right. And before we typed our words in, we had to make a script for it to make sure it was formal. And we used Voki to for the manufacturing tab to make a person that would um, be like to make a career in the manufacturing tab. And I did a um, construction worker. And that's about it. Are you interested in construction, or was that just part of the part of the project? Uh, a little bit of both. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Up and last up is Kayla Hendrickson. He's going to talk about telegamy, and it's going to be in his law and public safety and pathway video. Alright, so my name is Caleb. I'm going to talk to you about uh, Telegami. Uh, this is a map we used this year in our class. Um, we used it a couple of times throughout the binder. This one was on uh, uh, law and public safety. Um, it has a lot of features you can use. 
You can use the camera, like on your iPad or whatever device you're using, to take a picture for the background, or you can like search it up. It's got a built-in search engine in it. Um, you can type up a script, and we had to do that for this project. And I recorded, but you can also type in within the app and pick you know, like a voice and even accents. Um, that uh, you can customize your avatar. It has you can change its hair color, um, the size of it, clothing. And I like this app just because um, you didn't have to adapt to it. It kind of adapts to you. So it worked uh, great for what we did with it. And that's about it. I would have to say I like this app because they were only allowed 30 seconds, either 30 or 60 seconds. And so whatever they had to say, they had to be very concise in their writing and precise. And so I like that, that they didn't just get to you know have two or three minutes. They had to really think about what they wanted to say and do it in a short amount of time. That's a great skill to have, to be able to minimize and get the key ideas up there as quickly as possible. Um, I've seen Pathways before. Do the students know what that is? Can they explain what Pathways is? Do you know what Pathways is? Well, yeah, the, the pathways are, well, we, like I said, we had the, the six career fields and then it's broken down into the 16 clusters and then the pathways go under those clusters. And so they, they did find out that a lot, of, a lot of the careers didn't just fall under one cluster or pathway. It could fall under multiple clusters and so they you know, had to kind of remember that it, even though it's, you know, under one, it, it can be under multiple clusters and pathways. So kids, uh, students, when, uh, you guys can raise your hand or speak up, but were there are tools that you found really challenging? There's a question here from Roxanne. And I think we're probably, we just merged right into question time. So I don't know if Lori wants to, to mention the questions or Tammy. But I see one here that says, um, for the students to answer, which was the most challenging tool to learn? Which did they think worked the best for their purpose? Any one of you want to speak up? Okay. Uh, Josiah? Okay. So I thought the Tumblr hobbies were kind of challenging because, I mean, you only had like 30 seconds to do it, so you had to really get to the point fast. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like that. It. I'm sorry, jo Josiah also raised his hand to answer yes. that, it looks like. Yeah, I thought that the Glogster was the hardest because when we first got on, it was like, it seemed like a mess, but then once you got used to it and like adding everything in, it was easy and probably the most fun. Thank you. Yep. Uh, is this curriculum online and available for other teachers? Or is it strictly Nebraska? It's on the Nebraska career or Nebraska Department of Ed, mm -hmm. so I would say it's available to other teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Nebraska Nebraska has been very big into really looking at the careers and really preparing students for the careers that you know are, are probably strong in Nebraska, but also for other you know options and really m making them career ready. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the lessons dealt with, okay, what skills do we need to know? What kind of communication skills? You know, what activities and involvement can you be doing now to help prepare you for the future? So it, it was a really good curriculum and laid out well for, for us. 
Great. And before we go to the other questions I captured, let's let's turn over the mic to Mike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the pun was not intended, honest. <laughs> but you know what? It's awesome. It's awesome that it fit right in. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we wanted to do to just sort of wrap this up is talk about why uh, this matters and why I was really blown away not only by what Karma had done and that I saw uh, visually here, but now there's a whole new layer to this once we've had the students come in and explain this. Like I am just in like teacher nirvana right now. This is this is incredible. We've got a lot of opportunities to see what these kids can um, demonstrate in terms of what they've learned, but to have them actually in here and talking through it and articulating their actions is just uh, I mean what this this is a new level of rigor in, in as far as I'm concerned. I've written a lot about um, assessment with digital tools, and I talk a lot about what I call assessment 2.0. Um, and <clears throat> when I do that with teachers, I'm looking for four sort of overarching things. And one of them is that the student should still demonstrate the learning. This should not be about the tool. This should be about the task. Another one is that they should demonstrate proficiency with their content, the same as we would have them do if the digital tools weren't there. I also want to see some reflection um, and some articulation about why they selected a particular digital tool, which we've had from the kids today. I want to know what they've learned, and I'd like to also know how the audience um, is interacting with and affecting the, um, the end result, the product. So the, and the last thing is just attribution of what they've done, um, whether it's, you know, the calling out the tool that they used or if they used, you know, uh, medium, uh, media from the internet that they've given credit where credit is due, uh, which, which these kids have done. Uh, what's up here is a screenshot from my digital portfolios binder, which has turned out to be kind of a popular one here, but it's one of the ways in which we can uh, do effective assessment of uh, digital work, uh, creating process type portfolios, product type por portfolios. Uh, that we would do, you know, in binders, in physical binders, like Tina was talking about at the beginning. But you know, now we have the opportunity to do this digitally, and it's a really good, appropriate way uh, to assess student work uh, and, and students, you know, project and problem-based things using digital tools. And it's all, you know, here in in one spot. And they have a product of value that uh, they can take with them from now on. But I want to mention just a couple of other things. Um, the, and I, I don't want to stir everything up about the Common Core, but the, <laughs> the standards in our country uh, that, that we have now and the standards that uh, I work with in schools around the world, all of them know that we have to have some right now skills. We're not talking about preparing for the 21st century. We're not preparing to be modern. What is it that the kids need right now? And one of the things that they need right now, and it's from the College and Career Readiness Capacities on page five of the Common Core document, they need to use digital media and the internet strategically and capably. That means they need to do it by themselves. They need to work independently uh, you know, with, with these digital tools to demonstrate uh, their learning. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot of rays in the rigor here for me in terms of you know whatever standards you're using, whatever country you're in. But we want things in general to be more rigorous. And what's more rigorous than having to learn a lot of peripheral skills to demonstrate learning differently than they've ever demonstrated it before? These alternatives to traditional assessment are allowing all of these divergent demonstrations of learning. And I'm what's a better assessment than than that? <laughs> Um, I also want to point out something that uh, Karma said and that some of the students said about <clears throat> writing scripts before they engage the digital tool, having some formal writing processes going on, and uh, learning to be brief and precise. Outside of using the digital tools, those are the things that we want our kids to be able to do with writing processes. And I'm just, all I can say is wow. Like I, I, you know, we've been preparing uh, for this for a couple of weeks, and uh, even now what I've said is completely different than what I planned on saying because I'm just so blown away by what these kids have done. Um, this, this is a representation of right now skills. And uh, 
major, major kudos, virtual applause to uh, Karma and her students. I am, I am just thrilled with what you've done, and I can't wait to share it uh, with others. So congratulations. You've really done a fantastic job here. Mike, I think you brought, bring up a good point. The, the reason that we can share it is because the kids have done an enormous amount of work getting ready for copyright. And I've asked you guys this before. Does anybody want to raise their hand about what they understand about copyright issues and in the projects that you did and what you had to go through? If we could take 30 seconds to do that. Um. One thing we learned about copyright, I don't know, this is just like one part of it that we did. We had uh, find images that were labeled for use, but we still put, a, put the link and gave them the credit they deserved for letting us use it on there, and that's all I have. Thank you, Caleb. Was there anyone wanting to talk about why we have to worry about copyright? And what happens if we don't? Okay, Josiah. We have to worry about it because, like Disney, if you don't ask for copyright from them, um, you can get in big trouble and you can get fined. Yeah, Disney especially. Thank you. Yeah. Jaden, did you want to say something? Yeah, copyright is a big deal right now. What, Jalen, are you going to say something? No, I, I think she messages. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, this has been excellent. I want to thank Ms. Nancy and all of uh, all of these students for taking the time on your Saturday morning to come in and share with us your fantastic project. Um, it's had quite a reach. There were a couple other questions in the chat from earlier um, before we do the wrap up. One was about ThingLink. Was that an app for the mini iPad? Was that a, an iPad app? No, it was oh, it was web based. A oh, web based. Okay. A, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and I, I would say like. So um, sometimes there were apps, and sometimes we found that we liked the web-based a little mm -hmm. bit better. The apps did not always work, but LiveBinder app did work well for us, though. So. Good. Uh, another question was directed to Jackson, and this had to do with the uh, sports Dick Vitale broadcasts. Uh, did you have a preference, or do you have a preference? Which do you like best? Over like the Dick Vitale or over the app? Uh, I guess it was related to. It, you can answer either way, but you had different different sports. Oh, uh, which, sport, which sport do you like? Probably baseball. Okay. Those were those were the questions that I captured. Oh, which sport does he want to broadcast? Baseball? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, probably baseball or basketball. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I have one last question. You've done this in this kind of, uh, I mean, obviously you were juggling a lot of different things in this particular classroom. Would you like to see your other classrooms uh, in this way, in the way that it was your, your classroom with um, Ms. Yancey with Organized and structured, and the way you had to deliver and present, and I mean, it was a, it not looked like it was a lot of work. I'm just curious to know what you thought about that learning process and the classroom dynamics. Okay, Kayla. Um, yeah, it kind of it really enhanced our learning, like we learned the same stuff we would do with like paper and pencil, but we also got experience using digital technology and I think that'll really help us. So yeah. Before we go on, I do want to integrate the Thing Link does have an app. Mm -hmm. We now that I think about it, we tried it, but then 
if you created on the app, it wasn't available on the website. So oh, okay. we wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to embed it. So we didn't use the app. But there is an app for it. But we had some issues with it. Mm -hmm. with the app and the website. So I thought I'd better say that real quick, too. Thank you. And I think it's about time to wrap up the show for today. This is the slide that shows I would love to jump in here. <laughs> OK. Thank you, Peggy. I was wondering if you were going to. I'm on the mic. <laughs> Thank you all so much for such an awesome presentation. I, I am thrilled being able to hear directly from the students about their experiences. And it takes a master teacher to make all of these amazing things happen in a classroom. And so thank you uh, to Karma Yancey for what she has done and for sharing it with all of us. Our upcoming shows are going to be terrific. So be sure and come back every Saturday at the same time, noon Eastern time. Next week, we're going to be hearing all about the Global Read Aloud Project from Neil Rip, who is the creator of that project. And the following week, we get to hear from Kathy Cassidy. She'll be our September featured teacher. And she's one of the most amazing primary grade one teachers you'll ever meet. And you will love hearing about the many ways she uses digital tools in her classroom. The next week, October 4th, we're going to have an open mic digital storytelling session. Wes Fryer is going to lead that conversation. And we want all of you who are doing anything with digital storytelling to come to that session and plan to get on the microphone microphone and tell us what you're doing, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and what tools you're using, anything related to digital storytelling. Then we'll have our October featured teacher. We're going to do a great session with Alice Keeler on Twitter chats. What are they? Why would you want to do them? How do they work? And when do they happen? So that will be a perfect opportunity to learn about that. No show on October 25th because that's the Den Fall Virtual Conference, and lots of us like to attend that. We'll have a November featured teacher, Jamie Reynolds, a librarian from Montana, will be joining us for that show. And on November 15th, if you haven't discovered edweb.net yet, for professional development, you're going to want to come to that session and hear from Lisa Schmucky, the CEO of EdWeb, and a panel of teachers and principals talk about what a great tool it is. So those are the highlights of coming attractions. And I'll turn it back to you, Lori. Thank you, Peggy. This is the Gaming in Ed notice. There are, it's, a, it's a virtual conference, it looks like. Um, but they're looking at games, how they apply to education. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's newest endeavor. He has grouped together all of his online professional development opportunities, including hosting your own webinar. That's back. As long as you make the webinar public, you can have your own webinar in a Blackboard Collaborate room. You can nominate a featured teacher by filling out this form, uh, tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher nominate minus the E at the end. Uh, you can even nominate yourself to be a featured teacher for the month. As you exit the session, your browser should open the Classroom 2.0 Live survey page. Um, it's a Google survey. The URL is on this slide, as well as in the chat. Um, the link is also in the Classroom 2.0 Live re uh, resource tab in the Live Binder for this month. So there are many ways to get to the survey. At the bottom of the survey, you will find 
the way to get the professional development certificate for today's show. You can request it on the survey. Make sure, though, that the email you provide is a personal email rather than a school email because lots of schools will block this message from getting back to you. And an upgrade is that your name actually types out on this. You get the certificate with your name printed on it. The video and audio collection for recordings are also on iTunes U at this link. So you can either watch the shows on an iPod or an iPad or listen to them. The recordings are also available on the website for the show via RSS feeds. So there are many different ways to get to the recordings. And that recording for today will be posted later today. So special thanks to Karma Yancey, Tina Schneider, and Mike Fisher, and then also Karma's students, Caitlin, Jaden, Jackson, Isaac, Josiah, and Caleb, thank you so much for doing your presentations. To Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution. To Weebly.com for providing the website. And to everyone today who participated in the show, much thanks. And again, the recording has to process for it to be posted. So uh, please make sure that you do exit the session.